Hey, this is Nick with another Builder Trend tutorial, and this is another relatively new feature, open book invoicing within Builder Trend. So, so many of us as builders and remodelers, we're going from a fixed price model to a little bit more of an open book, time and materials, cost plus, many different names, but more of an open book invoicing. And so it's tracking your actual expenditures, whether it's your time clock or your costs to subcontractors or for materials, and then billing them forward to your customer. And this is something that was not really strong within BT a bit ago, but now it is really good. So I want to show you exactly how I do it uh, within my own business so you can kind of do the exact same thing. So when we talk about open book invoicing and Builder Trend is finally getting this fully functional. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the three different types of costs. This is what I do. I do these three, three different types of costs. You can bring in others. I'm going to bring in my bills from Builder Trend. I'm going to bring in my time clock and my QuickBooks expenses. Okay. Now you can bring in change orders and you can bring in estimates and some other things. This is how I typically will do it. I'm going to show you exactly what I do within Builder Trend. All right. So um, when it comes to this invoicing, basically what's now available when I go to create a new invoice, here's my, my new invoice is right here. I can add from right here. Okay. This button I can add from a few different areas. Okay. And Change orders, I do think, makes sense. If you're doing a, hey, once a change order is approved, you're typically going to take that change order and immediately create an invoice, and that's going to automatically take care of that. So that should already be handled. Selections and estimates, you can certainly do as well. The bills, time clock, and QuickBooks costs is where I spend most of my time. When I do a selection, when I do an estimate, I'm typically not going to bill that to a customer until I actually incur the cost. That's how I set up my contract. It's up to you on how that works, but these will show up here. Now, what I like about what Builder Trend has done here is they're only going to give you these options if these expenses exist. Okay, so if I don't have any time clock here, this won't show up. Same thing with QuickBooks costs, same thing with bills. And as I indicate some of these, they're going to be removed from the list on future invoices. So we can't really double count them, which is good. And this has gotten stronger. The newest point of this whole thing is the time clock and the QuickBooks cost. This is new within the year. Um, I used to have to go and I would invoice out of QuickBooks for this and I'd have to have my time clock on one screen and QuickBooks invoice on another and we'd go line by line creating those. Now I'm going to show you how we can bring those in to um, to build a trend. And if you can, I think, you know, as much as we can invoice out of build a trend, the better. That, that's where everything is kind of connected. Whether you receive payments through build a trend or not, that's up to you. I think it's a great option. But um, creating the invoice within BT really helps the job costing, the, the project profitability to keep everything cohesive as one, and ultimately the communication with the customer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I can add one of these. Before I do, I want to think about what the markup is going to be on all of this. So a, a really important component of any open book priced project is we have to be very transparent with our customer what our markup is going to be. It's not going to be zero. We can't possibly make money with that. We have to understand what our markup is going to be. And I find it is a really good place. I had a video on specifications uh, a bit ago. I think that adding your markup in your specifications is a really good place. Whether you know it's transparency for your customer, they will have known about it already in the contract, but also for your team. Okay. So if you have somebody else who's helping to create invoices, whether it's a VA, a bookkeeper, or just somebody else on your team, they can reference every project might have a different markup and it might be different for different um, cost types as well. In this case, I've got my 35% markup on materials and subs. And then the other thing we do is labor. Labor is a little bit interesting because what we're doing with labor is we're telling Builder Trend what my cost is for an hour of labor. And then we have uh, we need to mark it up to get to our price, okay? And so labor is a little bit different. I, I've got these roles that I use, my master carpenter, lead carpenter, et cetera. And the actual human being is going to record the time clock, but I'm going to, or my VA is going to understand who that person is, what the markup's going to be to get from our cost to our hourly rate, okay? I'm going to show you all of this. Let's start with just general bills and QuickBooks costs, really simple. So if I go to my owner invoice here, if I go to bills, this is going to bring up all the bills that haven't yet been added to other invoices that appear within Builder Trend. Now, this is really important to understand. This, these are bills within Builder Trend. These aren't QuickBooks costs. Okay, so these are things that we've added to Builder Trend. And again, I'm going to say typically we want to maximize our use of the Builder Trend bills as much as we can. 
we can't, I can't do it for everything because we go to the store, we go to Lowe's, Home Depot, we're swiping our card. Those are QuickBooks expenses. I'm going to show you those next. We can't do it for everything. I don't think you should anyways, but we can do it for a lot of the bigger ticket items, usually thousands of dollars or so. Uh, we would rarely have a bill here for like $12.58. Those small transactions are typically going to be tracked in QuickBooks and brought over. So I have all my items here. Now I have a blanket 35% markup for this project for all materials and subcontractors. So I can take all of them. I can select all, okay, and I can do a percentage. Now what I'm realizing here, this is new just as of today. I don't know if they've done this for a while, but import attachments to the owner invoice, that is a good idea too. So if you have receipts or estimates or any kind of documents stored in here, it looks like what will happen is they will be added to the invoice. And now here's my blanket markup. I can click this to apply it to everything. If for whatever reason, some of these items are gonna be marked up differently, that's fine. You can kind of go through and say, you know, these certain ones are gonna be 20%, the other are gonna be whatever they're gonna be. In my case, everything's gonna be 35%. I'm gonna go ahead and add that, okay? So it's adding my cost, there's my markup, here's my invoice amount, here's my total invoice. I'm gonna add items to the invoice, right, like that. Okay, so those have been added, and I'm well on my way to have an invoice. Save frequently when you do this, okay, um, just to kind of keep things um, solidified so we don't lose our work. All right, now, notice that I've added all my bills. It's now gone from my list. There's none... There's no additional bills to add here, so there's nothing else to do there. Next, what I'm going to do is QuickBooks costs. These are costs that come directly in from QuickBooks. We want to link up with QuickBooks, and we want to link to project and to cost code. So these are expenses that come through. For whatever reason, we decide to use them within QuickBooks uh, as opposed to uh, within BT itself. And again, because of my 35% standard markup, I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to do a 35%, apply that. There's my $22,000 total. I'm gonna to add those line items to the invoice. And again, well on my way to a really strong invoice. Now I'm gonna add from the time clock in a second. I'm not gonna use this project because this is a real live project with real live human beings and I don't want to publish their names and hours and rates and everything on the internet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to a different one over here. Um, actually, before I do, it's over here. I just wanna show you the job costing. What we can do with this, the reason it's so valuable is when we mark items as billable, it helps us to indicate an amount invoiced versus our you know, revised. So remaining to invoice could potentially help the customer understand where we're at when it comes to um, you know, how much more to expect. All right? Now you have to have your job costing and your estimate really locked in for that, which is a topic for another video. Let's go to this other invoice that I'm gonna do here. In this case, I just have my own time here, so you can see this, and I put myself in at a $50 an hour rate. Now at a $50 an hour cost rate to me, what does that mean for my price? Well, I need to be some kind of role. So let's say that I was a, um, in this case, I'm a pricing, scoping, budgeting person, right? So I'm gonna cost $50. I'm gonna mark myself up 70% to get myself to an $85 hourly rate, okay? I'm just gonna use that example here, okay? So I go to this invoice. I'm gonna add from my time clock here. And here is all of my time, okay? Now, you can see I'm doing some demos, some other things. And what you would probably do is if you have a couple different resources, I would grab all that are the same resource. So this is all, let's just pretend for a second, this is all the Nick stuff. And we had that, I think it was 70%, okay, uh, markup there. So let's, let's do 70% there, apply, okay? And then the other ones, you know, um, that didn't get that percentage, I'm sorry, um, we can do at a different rate. Okay, so if you have different resources that have different markups, you can do um, different ones for them as well. All right, then you can add those line items to the invoice. And I like to do this, you know, keep individual line items or create stacks. This is a cool way for everything. I have a lot of demo labor in there. Instead of doing an individual line for each, it's gonna do just one line per cost code, which is really, really useful. Okay, and again, this one's got some QuickBooks costs, so I'll bring those in as well with a, you know, a 35% markup. All right, now I'll take just one second to give you a word on um, on QuickBooks costs. You know, where do those come from? I got QuickBooks over here. QuickBooks costs are, you know, again, going to be linked and they're gonna show up if we indicate that we want them to show up, which we should. I'm gonna show you where we can do that. On the job info,
under accounting, we can indicate that we want QuickBooks items in there, which we've done. Okay, so that will then, as we're going through, and there's a column for it on the budget here that we can see it. And there's my QuickBooks costs. Okay, so I can see here that my building permits, I've got, you know, nine, there are 392 here. And if I look at QuickBooks, Here's my three, yeah. So I got, uh, I've got 392 in QuickBooks costs and then I got some bills and POs as well. All right, so um, the link is really, really strong and that's what we want to be in there because there's two different situations where we wanna track expenses. One is within Builder Trend itself. Bills can be tied to the schedule. So powerful as the schedule moves in or out, your due date on your bills move, but we have those day-to-day -day transactions. Those are gonna be tracked within Builder Trend, or I'm sorry, within QuickBooks and brought over, all right? So open book invoicing is so, so powerful, all right? Uh, really, really excited that they've made some adjustments and, and everything's looking a lot better than it had been before. Um, so give it a shot, and especially nowadays, it seems like more and more builders are getting to this open book model just because there's so much fluctuation in design and scope and price and everything. It's a really good way to ensure transparency to your customer. There's no secrets here at all, but to help your workflow uh, a lot as well. Let me know what else you want to see on Builder Trend. We're going to continue on with this series. We're getting some awesome comments and awesome requests for more videos. And so just let me know what you want to see. And you can go on this journey with me to use this really amazing software to help run our business, ultimately to give an amazing customer experience to our, our customers who are shelling out a lot of money for these projects. We want to make sure they get as much as they can. I call it the white glove project management service. I'll see you in the next video. Hey.